Let me explain. First 14 days of January, I made a million dollars net. I brought my girl back. I got a car for her. I became a man. I had my child, which shaped the person I am today. And each one now four later have shaped me again. And I do the same thing today. But I realized that taking action when you should is how you crush in this world. When did people start calling hanging around with a bunch of their buddies at their house ripping bongs kickbacks? I'm sick of this word already. It's what? it just made its way like into the vocabulary. <laughs> oh, we're having wait, what? Oh, really, Dylan? It's big in the black community. You know what goes on in the black community. It's big Dylan? in the white, it's kickbacks the white community. Kickbacks have been around for a while. Kickbacks have been around forever. Yo, but I know, but for some reason I just started hearing it more. I feel like it's I feel like somehow post Malone is responsible for it. I know he's not, <laughs> but like for some reason I feel like post would be like, yeah, we're having a kickback in my spot with some Bud Lights, couple <laughs> Welcome back to Impulsive. We're kicking it back here. <laughs> the number one podcast in the world. Thank you guys for listening, watching, viewing, and subscribing. I think it's important to discern the difference between a kickback, a hangout, a gathering, and a party. Like these are all very different things and you gotta be careful with what you're saying. A kickback is low key. You're hanging with your friends, maybe smoking a little bit, chilling, a couple of drinks pass around, nothing crazy. It's not a rager, which is another one. It's a kickback. <sighs> Something that happened at a kickback this past week that was uh, interesting that I might as well kick back to the audience. A friend of mine came in from a different country, from España, España, and uh, he'd never tried weed or alcohol in his entire life, and he got out here to Cali. A lot of people come out to Cali and they get excited, they get pumped up, yeah. they want to try weed. Oh yeah. So he said, I tried a little bit of the marijuana in California, and I had to call a friend to ask how to do it. Hmm. And for some reason, this friend told him that he should smoke the entire joint by himself Ooh. that he got. Oh. And by Ooh. the way, it wasn't just Cali weed, which is some of the strongest on the earth. It was like moon rocks, weed, <sighs> keef, wax. He goes, I took a 10 to 15 hits of it. <laughs> the bottom is Mario or Luigi. I don't know which one he is, but he's from Spain, <laughs> not Italy. And I go, well, what happened after that? He goes, I had to go to the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Straight to the hospital, bro. He's in the hospital for four hours. This was uh. like six days ago. He missed all, he flew out here to have meetings with us about new IP products, blah, 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 so on and so forth. Dude just in the hospital. <laughs> was in the hospital. Then after that, he was like, I couldn't see anybody, couldn't talk to me. That Cali weed hits different, bro, at the kickbacks. Yeah, yeah, it does. You gotta be careful, man. So, Cause everyone has that moment where you're smoking weed for the first time and uh, you know, maybe you take your first second hit and you don't feel it. That's what right, happened. Right. And you're like, oh, well, we must not be working, <laughs> especially with edibles. <laughs> then all of a sudden you're in the fucking fifth dimension. The edibles is another one. Uh, That's I, the scariest. My one. first yeah. edible hit was in, I'm not kidding. It was on my way to church. Like a boy. it was a Bible study. Yeah. <laughs> and they were like, my buddy fucked with me. I didn't know I took an edible <laughs> and I swallowed it and he goes, <laughs> and I go, why did you just snort? At me? He goes, dude, you just ate an edible. And you're not like your boys fuck with you. And I was like, there's no way this dude's literally just going to drug me in the middle of the day like this. It's like, yeah. no, nah, you're fucking lying. Dude, I'm driving. And all of a sudden I'm like, hey, I feel a little different. <laughs> 15 minutes, 40 minutes hit. I'm on the highway, bro. And I'm like, I got to slow down. <laughs> I'm going, wait. And all of a sudden, the car started honking. And I'm like, bro, I'm, I'm hitting like 100 miles an hour. This is why they're honking. They're scared. I look down. I'm going 40. Six. You're I'm going six 40 miles an hour. And I'm like, I got to get out. I got to pull over. I pulled over Uber to church. And dude, have you ever, if you're in church and people, they're motivation, you know, they're a motivation thing. So imagine me in church. Hi, this guy motivated. I go, <laughs> I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it, baby. And so, yeah, that's how you got, I got addicted to marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it gets worse. I, this is uh, totally irrelevant, but I had, I, I had a friend who uh, secretly s slipped his other friend as like a joke five tabs of acid. Oh yeah, what? that's not what? A, I'm so sorry. That ain't a joke. I am so sorry. Dude, you can't set that shit up and then say something where the FBI is going to question us later. I feel like I'm going to be responsible for something. No, what do you they, mean? No, because they're boys. You know, they're all from the same uh, part of town and kind of kind of wonky. Kind of what they, they fuck with each other like in that way. Like I would never, obviously to my boys, but that's like their thing. Five five tabs of acid. Like surprise, you're going you're gonna to fucking be on Mars. Surprise, dude! <laughs> Surprise! I'm melting as I just starts dripping. <laughs> Literally, yeah. Have yeah. you ever uh, have you ever smoked one with your with your with your mom or dad? I have, yeah. I smoked not one. yet. 
Uh, yeah. It's fine. Oh, it's oh wait, yes, we have at the ranch. Oh, I thought you were lying. I was gonna be like, yeah, no, we never smoked with GP. Oh, we have, right? <laughs> yes, in the bu- in his school bus. It is the coolest thing in the world. Ever. <laughs> I, I guilt tripped my dad into doing it. You know, I got him. I swear to God, this is a trick. I literally looked at him and I go, "What if I die tomorrow?" I swear to God, I like oh, so serious. Oh. He goes, "Why would you say that?" I go, "You're gonna go on for the rest of your life, not, you know, not having a J with you." Yeah. Like, God forbid I get a car accident tomorrow, Dad. You. Not gonna smoke one. He Damn. goes, "What the fuck are you doing to me, man?" <laughs> I go, "Just throwing it out there, forever and always." And I told you about it, which is even worse. So when they lower down the casket, you'll know. You'll be you'll know about it. <laughs> I'm going down, not high, and you never got high with me. Speaking of going high, our guest today. Oh yeah, it's probably high right now. He's about as high <laughs> as it gets <laughs> in many ways. He's got one of the craziest stories that you'll hear on Impulsive. He'll tell us how he went from prison to making millions. He's the man behind the Maverick Club with his company Subify, ladies and gentlemen. It's Chase Hero. Sir. Let's oh, go. Look at that. Promised yeah. me he was gonna Russian. grab my inner thigh and he didn't. Yeah. On the way past. They this, had that opportunity. I so. got caught up by your cake, bro. I'm telling you. Oh, the cake in the back it, there. There's he's, some he, back stuff. He saw it on that episode where I wore it where I dressed up and wore the button down with the uh with the meatball. <laughs> I had so many DMs about that. I had I so many DMs. Please let Mike keep dressing like that. <laughs> Morgan, I go, am I a stylist? Why the fuck are you messaging me this shit? Because <laughs> you put it in the video. Mortgage Mike, they call it. Not your first time here on Impulsive. Nope. nope. You've been Second on the time. set before. Yep. Talking about stonks, yeah? Stonks. It was when GME was going to the moon. Yep. And we it, brought you on to help us break down exactly what the fuck was happening with the stock market. And you you crushed. You were like you were like a a guest guest that episode, but people wanted more Chase Hero after. And I did too. I, I appreciate that. I thought it was great. You were very riveting. And obviously, like we didn't even dive into who you are and what your story is. Um <laughs> Obviously, we're good friends now. Uh, a hustler, a person who's uh, broken barriers and and thinks outside the box. And your success, uh, I think this is the the coolest part about it. your your success is so eclectic. Uh, you do a lot of things, right? You do e commerce. Now you got the yep. subscription platform. Yep. Um. You you're a collector in many ways, stock trader in many like you do everything, Chase. Yep. And you had a tough upbringing as well. I did. So I think this is a special episode. So thanks again for joining us here. Thanks for having Impulsive. me. It was awesome. Of course, bro. So listen, you went to fucking jail. <laughs> <laughs> We're going right there. You went to jail, Chase. Yeah. Yeah. It was terrible. My dad wanted to know about it. Yeah. He asked. He asked because because we should. You're you're wealthy. Yeah. Right. Now I wouldn't survive now for sure. A total bitch now. <laughs> <laughs> but but you made it out of the mud. Yeah. My dad wanted to know about your jail story, so yep. I want to just dive right in. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to start like how I got locked up and shit? Please, yeah. Be a good please, start. Chase. So I, I actually got arrested in class. Crazy, right? How old were you? Uh, well, so my first time getting arrested was 18, but like when I like, or 17, when I got arrested, arrested, and went to jail, I was 18 years old. Mm-hmm. It was a day before my birthday. Um, but my first time actually getting handcuffed, I was in my senior class and it was first period and Stuart guys are talking about drugs and shit. I had just eaten mushrooms <laughs> and oh no, the, the TV <laughs> goes dark, arrested? right? So it's like you were, it was like, uh, what's that? Like we watch the movies, you know, the teacher doesn't do shit except yeah. play movies. Yeah. <laughs> so it was that one. So, you know, I, I eat them, I'm sitting all and it goes dark. And so you're kind of like in this zone mm. and then all of a sudden the lights come on and like the bell hadn't rung and it was like all, you know, I'm like, what's going on? And two officers walk in the room and they're like, we're looking for Chase here. I'm like, how'd they know I was on mushrooms? Could they, <laughs> like, could, could they see it in my face? Could they smell it? Yeah, like, <laughs> oh my God, they're here for that. No, they, they, they weren't. Uh, they, they were there for, um, me getting in trouble with drugs, selling drugs. And you know, I had someone wrap me out finally and they dug through my shit and found drugs. Right. So they arrested me, they hauled me off, I, you know, I, I bonded out, and then I went back in, I went to arraignment. I thought, you know, I'm gonna get out of this. I had a friend of mine who has also gotten a lot of trouble. He's like, listen, shut the fuck up. I'm taking this one. You got me, I got you. And, and I said, okay, awesome. And I kind of had this weird smirk on my face. He got his bid, she looked at me and she gave me this whole kind of, and she just threw the book at me and sent me off. She's like, three and a half years, goodbye, and just banged her shit down. And all I heard was my mom go, <gasps> and then broke down. And so right from there, I'm like, we're golf slacks and shit. They haul me right off to jail. And like, the thing about jail or prison or getting locked up, it's not actually once you're in, it's the time prior. Because they toss you around like a pinball, right? You're going into all these holding facilities where everybody's coming in fresh off the streets. They hate their fucking lives. They're really depressed. They're really pissed off. They they got huge charges. And, you know, it got really scary really quickly. And, 
You know, you asked how I got out of the mud. That's how I got out of the mud. I sat in a cell for years of my life looking at all these people and I go, holy fuck, I'm actually a piece of shit. I, they didn't think that. I don't think that the world thinks that of me because I'm here with them. And no matter how big my ego is and how better I can say, I didn't do what you did, we're all the same in here. And at that moment, I really started realizing, because I was looking at normal guys who look like us, but they were older. I'm like, why are you here? You look so normal. And I realized it was just that quick for your life to get thrown away. And, you know, I just started being really good and I didn't get into no trouble there. I, I kept to my own. I read a ton of books. Like I, I really became educated on one thing, human psychology, the interaction of people. Like, how did I understand the wits game and why did I lose it so much? Like, why was I so bad at this game of life, mm. if you will, right? And once I realized that, I just did my time. And the day they let me out, I fucked up again and went right back in. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, no. <laughs> he's like, I learned everything about what to, what to do. <laughs> Read books. They do nothing for you. <laughs> well, Wait, no, the, th the thing is, the thing is, is I have uh, a, a really bad, uh, you know, probation, parole officer, if you will. She's probably going to see this, you know, which is crazy, but she was really, really tough on me. And she would make me take piss tests for weed. And like, I was just locked up for years of my life. Right. What do you think the first thing I did when I got out? Like got you just, high as fuck. I got high as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the next day they're like, Oh, by the way, you got to pass a piss test tomorrow. And I go, well, what happens if I don't? They're like, you go back for another 90 days. So no. I, just, I just got all my affairs together, realizing I'm going back for 90 more days. But you were probably happy as shit because you got high as fuck. <laughs> you know, it, it was a short lasted uh, victory followed by a really a terrible assault. And like, to be honest with you, I did that two more times. Wait, you really like weed. You're a weed yeah. addict. Yeah. And the thing is, is like, it, the thing wait, is, wait, wait, you, uh, what? No, 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 you can't just blow past that, bro. You, <laughs> hold on. Yeah, I'm a fuck up. You know, the thing is, is being self-aware. how many times like, are you going to fuck up until you, dude, you just gave us an inspiration. Like I looked here, around, here. I saw these people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, I even read books about psychology and then I came out, I forgot what I, what the fuck was I reading? <laughs> was it one fish, blue fish, two fish, three fish? So, so yes. But how about this? Have you ever been in a really dark place in your life? I know, I know you have. Have you guys been in yeah. a, like where you don't see anything the right way? You're just looking for relief from the fucking pain. You just want it to stop. Like it's just so debilitating. It's just a constant reminder that you're nothing or that you don't fit in or everything you've done up to this moment that defines you shitty. And it's tough when you're in that moment to not fuck up again because you're all emotional. You're... It came out of emotion. And when you're in a state of emotion and you make decisions based off it, you're doomed from there. And it was only when I truly realized that this was going to be the rest of my life like this, I chilled on weed. It was actually the only six months of my entire life I did. And then packed all my worldly possessions. I got on a bus and I came to California. But but what I wanted to get to is this idea of being a habitual offender. Yep. You were a habitual offender. Correct. You were in the same place that I was, which was, yep. this is my life. Yep. This is my life. I don't see any, you know way out of this. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. This is just how I'm going to be for the rest of my life. And, yep. and at some point in, in a lot of ways, you actually come to accept it and you, you, you find comfort in the fact that you have no hope left. Mm -hmm. You find comfort in the fact that there's darkness all around you and you embrace that. Yep. And you say, yo, this is how things went. This was the shake of, of cards that I got. And my, what I've tried to do with my platform is always tell people, don't settle into that darkness. You Correct. gotta keep that fucking light shining, bro. Yep. You have to find it. So what for you was that light that flickered and said, yo, I gotta change this up. You know, that's, I, I've been trying to like materialize it, you know, cause I think that's like the most impactful thing, but I think it's just the precipice. I think everybody has a point in their life where they make a decision where they're going to sit on their ass and do nothing or they don't accept it anymore. And, and that's a tough decision for a lot of people. And, you know, thankfully for God, he pointed me in the right direction. It, it, it wasn't like- Can you stop and say, thankfully for what? For God. So is that, would you say oh, that's your- Well, yeah. And so like, I always knew he had my back, but I think as his presence was more made known to me, because like, look at my life now, like, this is just crazy. If you would believe that someone who is as fucked up as me would be here now, and I did this all on my own, well- Thank you for so much credit, but I don't actually deserve it all. I'm just this, this vessel that he's allowing me. So he obviously had better plans for me, right? And and it wasn't just easy from there. You know, I came out to California and tried to start a new life. And then one day, yeah, 
I get a knock at the door. Probation officer. Two swift officers. <laughs> oh, it was. To pick up me at the door. And they, oh, they get to the door and they're like, Chase Hero. And I'm like, I got a bong in my mouth, like a big ass <laughs> tall one. I'm like, <laughs> he's still high as fuck. I was hoping it was a Bible. <laughs> hey guys, listen, I mean, I changed. <laughs> oh, he didn't tell you his God is actually Bob Marley. Yeah. <laughs> um, Seth Rogen. Right? So, yeah. So, you know, they... They're really cool. I'm like, can I call my mom? You know, like she's going to be really upset about this, you know? And, uh, and I just want to let her know before you guys let her know. And so they, they're real nice. They handcuff me, but they put like a sweatshirt over my hands and walk me out like this way. So it, I didn't like embarrass my roommates or my neighbors. And they, they take me out of the jail and they're putting me through the stuff. So I have a bad heart. I have hyperlipidemia and I'm on medicine. You know, I will be for the rest of my life. Most likely if my, unless my wife has something to say about it, but, um, I had to take this medicine. So I went into the doctor and I was like, you know, he was like, you're not going to get your medicine for like 30 days. I'm like, fuck, I'm going to lose all my muscle strength. Like it makes me like not even be able to hold a pop can or like a bottle. It's like gnarly. It just, it fucks with you. So as I'm walking back in, the guard's like, hero, roll up your sleeves. You're going to holding. You know, I've got this like orange jumpsuit with like white ass sleeves. Like our bodies ain't meant to be in jail. Like this is the body of a 12 year old synchronized swimmer, <laughs> not a convict, right? Like it's, it just, it ain't the same thing, right? So I look up because I'm trying to be all hard. It's in Riverside. I'm like, what? He's like, roll up your sheets. You're going home. I'm like, oh, great. My boss is here to take me. Mind you, it was a 31 day trip from California back to Wisconsin. And we stopped at 31 different jails. That's where I slept each night. Oh my God. Get the fuck out of here. Right. No pills, no pills, no nothing. I just got to do it. So they're going, they give me all my bad, you know, like jail is supposed to be tough. I think it's supposed to like change your mindset, but it's really funny when they hand you your worldly possessions in a Ziploc bag. They're like, <laughs> Hey buddy. <laughs> and you're like, Oh, thanks for my Ziploc bag. Right. And they're like down the hall. And so like, I go down the hall and I open the door and it's an alleyway, but there's no fences. It's like outside. And I'm like, they're going to fucking shoot me like that. They're, they're going to shoot me right now. And I remember looking back at the guy. I'm like, what do I do right now? He's like, state of Wisconsin isn't going to pay to extradite you. You're free man. And I like look at him and I'm like, at this point, I'm bawling in tears. I'm like, I'll stay. What did I do? Like, <laughs> like I think they're going to kill me. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I think they're going to, it's so omni. It's, it's like this alley, a, 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 like a hallway. And like, they're at the corner. No one else is in the hallway, but me. This happened in Shawshank Redemption. They're, they're, Spoiler alert. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Same, same. No. It, it did, right? Yeah. Oh, they, yeah. They I thought like, they were oh, yeah, free to go. He wa walks away. Talking. I'm going home. Yeah, they kill him. He crosses the line. Probably, yeah, yeah. probably subconsciously why it's in my mind. Shout out. Great movie. But so I'm like, okay. He's like, no, get out of here. You're free. Go home. And I, so I push the door open. It creaks open. And I kind of like look around all weird. And I shut it super slowly. You know, like when you're like, come home late as a kid. You don't want your parents <laughs> to know you're in there. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and then I just stand there for a minute. And I'm like looking around. And then two minutes later, someone else comes out. And they're like, oh yeah, man, this is how they, this is how they release us. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> Mind you, I've got like my sweatpants and sweatshirt because they took me at night. And it's like Riverside in the middle of the summer, hotter than shit. And I'm nine miles from my house with no cell phone or wallet or anything because I thought I was going back to Wisconsin. Why would I bring any of my worldly possessions? I was going to mail them home. So I walked home. And I'm kind of a fuck face in the sense that I like to mess with people. So like a mile before I got to my house, I started kind of jogging and, and developed a sweat. And then by the time I got to my place, I ran up my stairs as fast as I can. I went, I mean, I, let me in, bro. I jumped out the car window. Please, please go. Like, and you know what they did? My friends did? They called the cops. No, <laughs> no. Bro, at what point do you just maybe go home and like take a nap instead of just getting the drugs, oh, fucking no. with people? Yeah, yeah. So the cops show up and they're like, no, he's free to go. You're good. Right? So it's hilarious. So. <laughs> You Again. had six, nine style friends. Yeah. Like I did. Yeah, Takashi. You had two Takashis. They're like, yo, he's here. We Ten. got him. We got him. Come get him. Yep. Holy but shit. But yeah, you know, it, it was going through that and just realizing how fragile things were and like how one little mistake could lead to like the slipperiest slope. Mm. And I think that the fact I hated that feeling so much is what pushed me to where I'm at right now. And, you know, I take big risks in business, uh, you know, obviously tactically as, as I like to think so. And I just keep remembering, you know, reminding myself that like, even when people are shitty, just be good, be you, be strong, be the same person you are. And, you know, so far it's been fucking really good. And you, I mean, you've I helped me laughing. with it. I was laughing. Yeah. I was just going to say, you sometimes got to be walked off the ledge a little bit. Probably all. Listen, I come from the internet world where like, you know, like you can messiah shit on the internet. Like, watch out kids don't mess with kids on the internet. Right, it's not, right, a, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like you yeah. can, it's a crazy world. And I just, I come from a different place and like, 
you know, straight up, like having you guys around, like you guys have been instrumental in like helping me understand this world and this industry and all of these things. And like, just keeping a sound head about things. And I truly appreciate it. It's having great people around you that constantly just remind you of like, Hey, you solve things this way. And yes, it works, but you ever tried it this way? It might also work and be less stressful. And, right. you know, and, and it's been, it's proven it's, you know, weight and gold, if you will. Besides that uh, massive learning curve or learning lesson you had <laughs> as a, <laughs> as a young man, you also have a thing. You're very smart. I appreciate you, you that. Use, you use the word tactical. Um, and I, I'm wondering where that comes from. And if you had it before you went to prison, like if you were one of those kids that kind of just coasted through school, yep. got good grades, yep. or, or maybe didn't, but, I didn't you, get but, good you, grades. but you knew you could. Yep. Did you always have that thing? Yeah, I, I think I had a little bit of something of doubt, not knowing why where I fit in, right? Uh, so I didn't do good in school. I did good in school, but I didn't show up much to it. <laughs> um, you know, I was selling drugs. You know, I was being, an, it was hard for me to go to a school where I was making more than my teachers already. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And you like, were making that much money? I, we were making a lot of money. And that's why you get in trouble is because you make a lot oh of money. God. You stand out. Like it's very, it's very apparent when someone's doing something nefarious. Well, the dude was throwing crazy parties and throwing money at people. He yeah. wasn't hiding. <laughs> Facts. Well, you were? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. We went to like UW, like uh, these street, these bars, like brothers and stuff. And I'd walk in with like 20 K underage, shut the, sorry guys, I'm out on you, but yeah. shut the door and we would just rage the whole night. As a high schooler. Oh, well, I was now out of high school okay, going, okay. you know, like okay. just before I'm about to be 18. This is like months before I go away. Uh, I'm living cloud nine. We're riding around like a Porsche, <laughs> you know, like I'm like getting laid all the time. Yeah, I'm like, Kyle's yeah. just the shit. This he, is the, he was <laughs> like, uh, he was like the first gen <laughs> hacker. Who just like stole their first yeah, Bitcoin, Bitcoin heist yeah. and then show up at the club at with like hide with hundred K cash. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and it yeah. was funny now, you know, I thought they treated me harsh back then. I look at it now and it was the best lesson ever. Shout out, you know, municipalities for, you know, going hard on me, but they like changed me. Otherwise I'd probably still be a fuck up today. What age were you when uh, your life really started to turn around? 23. It's cra it's cra It's so crazy how weed was was viewed back then and how that was like one of your uh repeating offenses yep. and, and now like it's it's legal in there's some people states, that are still in jail for life right it's now so weird for marijuana it's weird. offenses it's, it's weird. wild i don't know how that's a thing it I is don't, i don't get that yeah money probably politics well no i mean it's i don't want to I don't know how deep we're going to go down this rabbit hole, but race, I think it has something to do with it, or at least, or at least the socioeconomic issues that are tied into race at certain times. You However know, you want to look you at You know it. why they made marijuana illegal in the first place, right? No. Yeah, I do. You, let's uh, hear it. The owner of the newspapers didn't like hemp and he didn't, he didn't like the power of it. So what he did is in the newspaper, he made it look so vile and evil because he thought it was a competitor. You're talking about newspapers like, like hey, guess what? these type shit. Guess what? Google this. I believe it was made illegal because the thought was it made white women fancy black men. Right, Google right, that right, right now. Right. No, they said like, that. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, the most foul too. shit ever. They said that because they, they wanted to get it illegal. What it's a Jekyll and Hyde effect? Is that what you're yeah, talking about? Yeah, look at right from there. Dr. Look Jekyll, at the, the Mr. Drugpolicy.org. During hearings on marijuana in the 1930s, claims were made about marijuana's ability to cause men of color. Oh, that, my bad. So it was like, but they were, it was it was a race baited a thing. A way to control. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah, like some old school Yo, this, bullshit. This, this country is crazy. <laughs> well, you like, remember, I really don't think people realize how just like corrupt and backwards we are in some verticals. You know that they once said like tobacco wasn't bad, like smoking cigarettes was Yo, fine. Like it's like, Oh, it was the biggest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was the biggest thing in the world. Everybody was doing it. What? Remember Reefer Madness? Yeah. Remember the movie Reefer Madness? Yeah. Where it was like, if you smoke one hit of weed, you'll turn gay. You'll jump out a fucking window and meet. Like, it was horrifying. It just comes to show you that, like, we're all kind of mixed bags trying to figure it out. No one really knows what's going on. And we just put so much power in people who think they do. And we're like, oh, yeah, I guess that's probably why it is. Shit, let's abolish it. You know, it's really crazy when you look into this stuff, isn't it? It's all crazy. You know what else is crazy? What you've been able to do in the business world. Can we dive into that a little bit? What Absolutely. is the basis for your success in business? What did you do? Talk about your 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 journey on e-com. Talk yep. about your journey on arbitrage, on Facebook advertising. Yep. You you are looked at as one of the you know crushers in that fucking space. And a lot Appreciate of people that. I talk to, um, you know, all the time at different dinners, business meetings, whatever, know who Chase Hero is. Appreciate they that. respect his grind. And and something that I've come to respect quite a bit about you is your is your hustle. Appreciate and your that. and the amount of time and effort you put into your work. How did it start? How did it get to where it is now? 
Um, you want me to tell you how I started like in the e-commerce? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great. Uh, November 12th, 2011, never forget the day. Had 2,000 bucks to my name. My wife and I split because she wanted to have a baby. She was pregnant with my daughter, my first daughter now, Hayden. And uh, I was like, you're crazy. Like, this shouldn't happen. I'm fucking broke. Are you mental? And so we split because her mom's super religious. And she's like, if I'm going to have an abortion, I'm leaving you. She left, right? So I met this guy, Ted Danik, and he showed me online Facebook, like ads. Uh, I sat in his office and like at noon at one day and he said, I'm going to show you how to run an ad on Facebook. Uh, uh, it was a France a diet or something offer. And he goes, listen, come into my office. I'm going to show you this, show you this. I'm like, he's like, how much money do you have? I'm like $2,000. He kind of did that. What you did before. <laughs> 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 which was which was really which was amazing i'm like thanks buddy um but basically they just kept saying a couple things they said watch the stats and don't fuck this up and they basically brought all these people in to help me and he did it because you know he later told me he said he saw something in me and he felt really bad that i was in such a shitty place in my life and i went home i lit up a joint marijuana always seems to have a place in my life right <laughs> and they're like don't fall asleep because i'm starting my edit like midnight so I start it. What do I do? Fall asleep. I fall asleep. <laughs> I wake up at like nine in the morning, like crying like a little girl because I, I don't come from money. I ain't got no family bread. I ain't got, I had no other real friends. I had no one to take care of me. I just put $2,000 of the last $2,000 I had onto something. I have no idea what I'm doing. And I log in at nine in the morning and it's $0 made, $1,200 spent. Mm. I was broken probably the darkest time in my entire life. At that moment, I'm like, even with the best help in the world, I'm shitty. So fast forward, they call me like a hundred times and they're like, and I, I find the answer like hysterical. I'm like, Teddy, I need, shout out Ted Danik. I'm like, I need some time, dude. Like I'm a mess right now. And he's like, bro, look at the stats. The pixel didn't fire. Listen, I knew that's right. <laughs> I, I, I never even knew about a pixel. I'm like, a, I had a, my first wire transaction was like a week prior and I never heard of a wire. The guy's like, what's your wire information? I'm like, what? what? Is that like special? Like, yeah. so I look and it was like 36, $3,800 off 1200. And I turned the spend back on. I closed the day spending 2k to make $4,200. That's November 12th, 2011. My whole life changed that way. Let me explain. First 14 days of January, I made a million dollars net. I brought my girl back. I got a car for her. I became a man. I had my child, which shaped the person I am today. And each one now four later have shaped me again. And I do the same thing today. But I realized that taking action when you should is how you crush in this world. I mean, you told me buy Pokemon cards. I didn't even hesitate. I go, cool, what one should I get? And I just started buying, right? I'm just that way. I hold a lot of love and admiration to the people that I trust. I believe, excuse me, my, my circle is very small. Mm. So if I believe you, I fuck with you and I follow you. Mm. So I started running, you know, just normal, you know, online ads, no subscription, no nothing. And then what happened is I started getting some success, but then I realized the, the industry was maturing and big players were coming into the game and they had bigger budgets than I, and they were just dominating me, just wrecking me every day. I get a great position. They'd buy it out, take it. I'd have nothing. And I'm like, there's gotta be a better way to do this. And I remember going into Costco and I kept going in and I'm like, how do they make money on the shit in this fucking place? It's always so cheap. And they, they gave like a billion dollars a year away in fucking, you know, these, what are the tasters or whatnot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taste yeah. Tests. I, oh, yeah. By the way, I would, I would go away with my parent, with my mom. My dad and my brother, we'd have taste test dinners at Costco. The just best, going the around. That was our evening activity. Tapas. I, I bet you that'd be, a, that'd be like a multi-million person Facebook group if every person would just admit to how many times they've done that. My we would all get along. Of, of growing up, my favorite part, trying the, the taste tests at Costco. Imagine yeah. doing that as a grown-up high. Yeah, it's oh. great. It's great. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry. No, it's, it's it actually it. awesome. You brought, <laughs> you brought me back. So, <laughs> so long story short is just like anything, I just do my research. You know, we live in this day and age where if you get your ass, get off your ass and just use one of those things, there's a lot of answers. People tell you a lot of things in this world. And I looked and it was subscriptions. They were making all this money on that hundred dollar a year subscription. And I was like, well, what did they do? They just gave me access. Like I didn't get anything with that money. Mm. I got, ac and that access to me was so valuable because I got them tasters, because I got all those things that I wanted. I, I was perce perceived value, right? So I was like, how can we build this online, right? And so we started looking at the different things, like do I send a product every month? Do I do this? And what it came to is if I built a version of Costco online where I built Chance, 
the chance to be something bigger, win something, be a part of something. If I gave deals like so that you felt value right and then I built a community, people would fall in love with it. And that was my thesis. And that was 13 years ago. And, you know, billion and a half later, we've done just that. And my whole being here is building subscription and building communities because like a brand or a consumer, I truly believe in infinite relationship possibility. And I look at it like this. How far do you think a relationship could go if there was never a chance to meet the person in person? Do you think that there'd be a ceiling to that relationship that you could obviously never get past? I would assume so. No, yeah. I don't think so. You think that you could just go forever? Like I if, couldn't. Obviously. How about your wife? How about like you? Oh, oh, sorry. You know what I'm saying? Like imagine. Okay, I get the, depends what a relationship personal, you're talking about. A personal about. relationship. Co correct. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Correct. So the way I looked at it is the one thing we as people all try to do is be a part of something and be tied and be linked and have our money go to somewhere of value, right? And I realize, you know, with your guys' help and showing me this industry and how amazing it is, I realized that that is what we needed to create. I realized how powerful it was. And maybe I'm wrong. How powerful it was to meet him? Huge. Uh, I would say it changed my life. Absolutely. All, all of us. Everybody at this table, for sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was hoping you were going to say that. I was all worried for a second. Like, the fuck Logan. <laughs> oh, no. Also, fuck Logan. <laughs> also, it's <laughs> damaged my life. So, like, it's a yin and yang. You know what I mean? But, but would you agree or disagree that there's more people in the world like George and Mike? I disagree. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, you got I, I mean, need to build these yeah. questions out a little bit. More. I mean, not like <laughs> not like, like a Syrian a and a drug addict. Weirdos, <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? Like there's people that have the charisma or the desire or yes. that, that have the that that it thing it takes yes. that they should have more in life. Yep. This is why we created what we created. I think that when you give a creator the ability to create unfiltered, undisrupted in a safe place of people who vibrate with them and care about them and they're aligned to none of this bullshit over here and there. In return, the fan gets the most intimate experience ever and they get a chance at an infinite relationship. How many people have you brought here? How many people have you taken to the ranch? How many people have, didn't you just show up at someone's house? Yeah. Aren't you flying someone out? Yep, this month. Like, I know it doesn't sound like a lot because you're, you're in the scene and this is life. I mean, this is, you see, it's like, I, I remember when I used to be like, Logan Paul, damn, it's crazy. Now I just see you just Logan. You know, you're my buddy. I like, <laughs> kick in the balls when I see you and it's fun. But what I realized is, you know, you're a, you're a beautiful human being. People should have more resource to that. People should see you as you without you having to, dance around their world. Listen, go to those platforms and dance around their world because that's what that's how that world goes yeah. and that's fair. But I think that you should also have a world that's yours and something that you dictate how you interact, you dictate how you create and you dictate the terms of the engagement. And by doing so, I think it builds something really crazy and it's really fun to watch. So that that was your thesis and that was your thesis when you started the Watchers Group, Correct. which is where this idea of a subscription-based community started, Correct. right? And where you taught people how to do e-commerce and, yep. and how to um, buy ads and, and, and uh, make money in that way. And that was massively successful. Yep. Where, where I think both of our lives changed was when I, I walked into your warehouse. It's awesome, by the way. It's awesome. Your warehouse. Is you should be my it's neighbor. Like Rob, no, it's, like Rob <laughs> it's like a fantasy yeah, factory fantasy for, factor, for business. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Art everywhere. Fucking 12 of the most expensive vehicles you ever see. All the same color. Basketball hoop. Paintball, Murakami, paintball guns, all over the place. It, everything. And, I've got uh, issues. Agreed. <laughs> at, at first, I think we were just hanging out. I think I'd yep. come by. we just like chop, chop it up, talk about ideas. And then eventually you're like, yo... You, you need to have a subscription service for like fans who really fuck with you. And I was like, ah, like, bro, I've seen it. Yeah. I've heard it all, Chase. <laughs> like, I've been down this road before. Uh, like, OnlyFans is doing it now. Like, why don't I just do OnlyFans? And you're like, no, dude. I could, I think I could make you a platform where you could own all of it, where you don't have to, you're your own boss. Yep. And it's a community of people who really fuck with you where you don't have to worry about getting canceled. Don't have to worry about saying something fucked up. And you're rewarding your most, uh, your, uh, most active fans. Yep. And, uh, so then we built the Maverick club and this is how, uh, this relationship has continued to develop because I'm obsessed with this club as a creator, like knowing I have a place where I can just post and do whatever I want with people who, appreciate me is crazy. 
I'm gonna tear it's, up. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's oh honestly, you I'm so used to be every creator is so used to just being critiqued about every little thing you do. Like I won't send 90% of tweets. Like y'all should see my drafts, just thoughts I have. Cause I'm afraid some fuck ass is going to say some dumb shit yep. that I just don't want to hear. And in this club, it's, it's all so positive and, um, it's zero a, fuck ass. It's a cool it. way. No, no, it's no. a cool way for, for both people to give back and just like reciprocate energy. Yep. And so I told him about it. I told some other people about it. I told him about it. Ironically, I think we all have clubs now. Yep. Which yeah. is awesome. and over time and crew. It sounds cheesy, but like when he was like, you're going to love it. And I was like, all right, buddy. But like, <laughs> no, because you fall in love with it. The you, people just are, they, they fuck, and they're not weird. That's the part. So I thought they were going to be weird. Bro. <laughs> I'm gonna be, right, I thought they were going to be fucking weird. You're yeah, like, wait, right. you want to subscribe to Bubba Town? Like, yeah. like 20 bucks What's a good, month. Dude. They're going to fucking be weird, yeah. right? Bro, no, the great. deep conversation. I'm like, what the fuck? I know. This is, this is literally like a full blown relationship, and I it's not it. weird at all. It it's elevates cool. it elevates the engagement and the conversation on both ends of the dichotomy, right? Yep. Or on both ends of the spectrum. You've got you've got a creator now able to put out the content they actually want to create. It yep. is not elevated by an algorithm that rewards certain thumbnails or titling. It is seen. It, it, it is you delivering completely and only what you want to deliver yep. and is received by people who only want to see what you deliver and what you want to deliver. So what it does is it facilitates this really symbiotic relationship between the viewer and the creator that is then elevated even further by the ability to have a conversation with that person. If somebody direct messages me, yo, like there was a part in your book around page 47 where you said this, what did you mean by that? This is the only place in the world where I can give them a paragraph long answer or a face time them or whatever it is. Yep. So I think it was a necessary step for not only influencer and creator, but for celebrity to take the, that relationship to the next step. I agree. To the next level. And I think that as a consumer, it's going to really start taking off soon. And what I think that is, I think people are realizing what the most valuable <laughs> commodity is here and it's time. And people are like, well, YouTube's free. I'm like, well, is it? Because when you start out watching Logan's video and now I'm on yours and then du yours. Double ads now. And now I'm, correct. Not one video without double ads. Correct. And, <laughs> and, and, and let's talk about that. When you watch a movie, when you're trying to get into a movie, a piece of content, do you want it disrupted? Doesn't that mess the flow? That'd be like having sex. Be like, hang on, let's stop real quick. Let's go for a little run and come back <laughs> and continue, right? It's like, you don't want interruptions with emotional interactions. And it's like, you definitely don't want them with like weird things that could throw people off, right? How do you continue this content? So for us, we look at it like you guys are already selling your content, right? You sell it to a, a platform, a platform mm -hmm. sells it to an advertiser mm -hmm. and an advertiser mm -hmm. sells it to the client, mm -hmm. right? So the money's being made. People consume all the time. I wanted to build something and you guys are the ones who build it. Like it's, I'm just laying the concrete on the road, mm -hmm. but I wanted to help facilitate something that would allow people to take that path and control it entirely. And so your thesis proved out to be uh, correct and, 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 and thus is Subify. Correct. Do you feel like Subify is competing with OnlyFans in a way? Because it's, it's, it's kind of a yeah. similar model. Fair. I think Subify is obviously, you have m more access and the-, the um, Yeah. I think we're like a- different, but- Like the gold standards is my, I'm a little biased, okay. but like- <laughs> I think we are, but I think we're as similar as a Rolls Royce is to a Honda Civic. And I'm not saying like they suck because they're obviously phenomenal. But what I'm talking about is you're super creative. You're super creative. You, my friend, are super creative. Why would you want a platform that's something slash Logan Paul, super uncreative? You live in their world. You don't get any say in this. And then what happens when someone else does something bad and affects you or you want to go change over here and do something different or move this over here. Like you have zero freedom as a creator. And so like, we like to give these people the option of like controlling what they work hard for. What happens if OnlyFans goes under? What happens if they get embroiled in some crazy lawsuit? What happens if YouTube becomes the next vine? What happens if people keep putting all of their eggs in someone else's basket? I never tell people to stop what they're doing. I just tell them to think about their future because people at your guys' level and a lot of these creators, you have built arguably your own broadcast centers. Mm. Like, bro, you had a Pokemon unboxing that was like breaking every record. It was fucking Pokemon boxing, yeah. which I fuck with, but I'm just saying like, you know how crazy that is? Yeah. So just, again, just giving you guys the fluid control of your own you know, destination is amazing. And listen, 
I get so many people who hit me up and talk about a, how it's so unfair that all you are on your club and that they hate me for it, or B, how it's so crazy you're on the club all of the time. Yeah, I, I, I try to post as much as possible, at least once a day. Do, um, but do. And, and it's it's also cool because it's almost impossible to post too much. Yep. I, I could just dump whatever. And, and yeah, people are upset because I no longer really post on YouTube. <laughs> That's what I was just going to say. I was going to ask you, I was like, do you, uh, do you ever feel the receiving end of any of the, the Logan Paul fans that aren't yeah, you know, like, I got death threats. I told you about that shit. <laughs> People are like, the reason. <laughs> You're the reason. Yeah, they're, absolutely. These kids are really good investigators. They're like, you did this. I'm like, I, uh, and I, I'm oh just no. a nice guy responding to my Instagram messages. Probably stop, should stop. But I'm like, I did what? They're like, you destroyed Logan Paul for me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh my God. Oh I'm like, no. I promise you it's worth it. Right? It's like people spend money on the so most asinine stuff in the world. Why not? spend money where you get value given back to you. Like truly. And we only really work with creators who are amazing. I mean, like that care about their fans. I always, you know, one of the big things is like, how do I give back? I always know right away when a creator says, well, how do I give back to my community? Mm. I'm like, I want to fuck with you. Yep. Like right away. I'm like, because, because when the power's in your hands and the revenue comes to you, amazing stuff happens, right? And it's really fun to watch that. I, like I said, I, I can't wait for all the future stuff you do. I'm excited to see who you put on Fly yours. Out. Yeah, I'm excited. Even I, may, I might show up. You know what I'm saying? You it's should like, come to it. You should come. I told them they could be a kind of like a creator of their choice. Yep. But, you know, there's probably limits to that. But you know, it's going to be fun. This has been a premium solution, far more premium than OnlyFans. Yep. Fully branded. Uh, you know, access to the creator, conversation, different content, giveaways, a lot of stuff that's not offered <laughs> on their system. Yep. But you don't really have to talk about Subify here because you're seeing it catch on. I'm seeing yep. more and more creators start to sign up for Subify. More and more creators are putting it out. Bryce Hall is absolutely crushing it on Subify. I love the kid. Great kid. Who, who else? We've got an, a number of people. Yeah, we like to keep. You've been talking. We about. like to keep it a little low and on the radar and let you guys take the credit for it. But yes, we've been doing very, very well. And 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 Bryce Hall is like, you know, shout out all those TikTokers. A lot of people in the the space says TikTokers can't make no money. They like <laughs> typecast them. You know what I'm saying? They're like, oh, that's just no problem. Young man is not only killing it, but like. We, we have algorithms that run all the data to see what people are saying. People are enamored by it. Mm. He is in love with it. Like the message he sends me is like, bro, it's so nice to be me. I'm constantly ridiculed. This is like dope. Yeah. And it's like, it also, for someone like us, gets to I get to see like these kids shine. And there's something really, it's just like you guys, it's something really cool to watch amazing people in the cut, like crafting their excellent. It's like- it's intimidating, but inspiring, right? In instead of being around shit people all day, you're watching someone who does something completely different than you crush it. Damn, you know? I just talk about my sex life on there a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what these people want to hear. My, my club uh, manager, yeah, cool, because it's still, I won't do it. But like, but that's what I'm saying. That 10% that of my life that I never wanted to show online, it's for the Maverick. Yeah, for the yeah. Maverick. Yeah. But yo, this, this, this subscription conversation is very interesting because uh, this the shift to subscription Although I still feel early, yep, very early, I feel like it's been going on forever. Like we saw Netflix crush it. Like, do you remember when you subscribed to Netflix to get DVDs mailed to your house? Oh, yeah. And 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 I, I'm just wondering why it took so long and for even like Amazon Prime to just for people to catch on. Prime's to, probably the biggest to the example. subscription service. And, and and what what is it about subscription? Is it the recurring guaranteed revenue? Is it uh, the, the community, the fan base? What is it? I mean, I think it's a little bit of everything. I think the, the guaranteed revenue gives the creator safety to keep doing great things for them, right? It's not like, a, you know, I might get a brand deal this month or I might have my video get placed at the highest on the, the home page or the whatever page so people see mm. it. This is like mm. giving you stability, stability that is in a wildly crazy environment full of emotions and care. I think it's something that you guys need. And as for a customer of it, I look at Subify as like an addition to like a Netflix, in my opinion. I look at it like if I want to create, watch a creator create, I would love to also learn more about them and have a conversation with them and go deeper down that hole because there's a reason I'm watching them create. There's a reason I like their movies. There's a reason I like their craft and athletes or sports or entertainment. And I think that when you allow people to have a purpose to the content that they're consuming, greatness comes from it. Mm. Like, I think one of the greatest things that ever happened was podcasts. 
I think it took people away from the normalities of how they ingested their information and they got it from someone that they can relate to because that's all success. That's all, you know, finding that higher power is, is fucking with someone that you relate to that's doing what you want. It's not like, oh, that guy's successful. I want to be like him. It's something you truly vibe with their core. And then they, they raise you up as they're going up. Right. And so I'm watching it happen every day. I mean, listen, you were amazing steward of all of this. I don't think we could have picked a better person. So God bless you. Like you're an amazing human being. I owe you my life for that. And you really just set the bar really high. And to believe it or not, you know, shout out to you and all the creators work with, you're a common thesis in most of these people's conversations with us. They're like, I'm really impressed with how Logan has changed his flow. He's always on top of things. Like I'm in his club right now. That guy posts crazy amounts. Do I got to post like that? I'm like, you're going to want to. And, and they're always like, but I'm busy. And then they launch. And then all of a sudden, what are they doing? Post. Hey, you, post, you, you make time. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like people feed off. Who doesn't want to be treated good? in this crazy world, right? Who doesn't? So look, bro, you're obviously massively, <laughs> no, I'm on your Instagram. <laughs> you're obviously massively successful. Subify's taken off. The uh, The watchers group take, is taken off. You made little Pokemon cards here. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, subscription model for you has been a, a, a success. And yeah, you still managed to have so much fun, dude. You, you've taken me <laughs> on on dirt biking excursions, uh, you've you've gifted me a dirt bike, multiple of them. Uh, uh, you've let me use your RV to go to to go to June Lake. Um, drift bikes, that thing which I accidentally flipped. I flipped your Can Am. I'm sorry. <laughs> So you still manage to be a kid is what I'm saying, and I've always admired that about you. Is like there's never there's never not room for fun, never in your life. Does this keep you young, healthy, spry? Is this what is this why you do the things you do and work as hard as you do? Absolutely. This is choice. This is, this is, you know, breaking up the noise of the day. And when you get to do fun things to your friends that like take your mind away from things, it's really, excuse me, really fun. I mean, look, dude, <laughs> you got the cars, you got the dog, the house and the family. And your baby looks like mini me in this particular <laughs> <laughs> one billion <laughs> this particular frame. Cause you are a family man too. And, uh, yeah. you, you're doing it right, man. You, you really made it out of the woods. God damn. <laughs> Crazy. It, the thing is, is it, it is crazy to be honest with you. You know, like I look back at it now and I'm definitely s truly grateful, but the honest, the thing is, it's, it's all about meeting the right people, getting in the right scenarios. Mm. And it's not just what you learn from them, like in the business world. It's like, what do they teach you about as a human being? Cause actually business and all this isn't all that difficult. It's the time in between the business. Like how'd your day go? How's your relationship going? How's your family going? Because how are you good at business if you're not good at life? Mm. And so like forever in my business journey, I was like, I need to be the best businessman. Work, 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 work. And I was just like this broken individual. I'm like, oh, why isn't this working? I'm like, oh, because I'm a boat with a hole in it, right? No matter how, how many times I go out in the lake, bitch sinks. Till I <laughs> fix my problem, I couldn't do anything. And mm. so for me, it's just, you know, keeping it all together. And honestly, everybody has a different version of success. My version is I get to be exactly who I am quirky, weird, off-putting, whatever. And everybody accepts me for it because I do better good than harm. Mm. Do, you have, do you have fuck you money? Uh, someone asked me this earlier and, and like my answer to it, I'll give you my answer to it. As a child looking up now, I would probably say yes. But as someone living in the moment, <laughs> yeah. I'd say, I just watched that Justin Sun guy spend $69 million on the Beeple piece. Do you know what that made me feel like? You know, like these guys, like it went 13 million, 25 million. Like, oh, I got more. 50 million, 60 million. Like the first N <laughs> N NFT in auction by Beeple's crap. It, first off, the guy's crushing it. This isn't his only like multi million dollars. <laughs> he went from selling like hundred dollar pieces to like I think he's worth a hundred million now. Yep, yep. And NFT so for sixty nine million dollars. So it's his Did first Danny Duncan first his first five thousand days. <laughs> And who, who bought it? Justin? It said on the top, Justin Tron, the guy who followed uh built Tron, like the T you know, TRX coin. Okay. It was like a crypto. I mean it's it is a crypto, but yeah, he bought it. Supposedly he's got like a net of, of 400 and I'm like, I'm looking at, cause at first I was like, this had to be a bit, a bit, a guy with a couple of B's and I, and I, somebody said he was, let's see what it says, 410 what? million. And I was like, dude, they have 410 <laughs> and spend 70 on some digital art. I don't know. So man. let me, let me, he definitely got more than 400 million dog. That's a lot of money yeah. to be spending. I'm going to go ahead and say he probably has more. I mean, yeah. he's in the crypto game. I'm like, what do they not know that he has? But simultaneously look at it like this. This was sold at Christie's. 
This is literally like when you Googled how many major publications had that up, like all of them. All of them, yeah. So, do you think that that's still worth sixty nine million dollars, or it's already even increased? Way more. Oh, it's appreciated already. So oh you God. might. It might just be a guy who's got a ton of money in coin. And they want to move some stuff around and offset their risk, right? What happens if Bitcoin goes down? People ain't. He paid in Ethereum, it looked like, right? Oh, gangster. Yeah, same, same thing. Obviously. I wonder what the gas looked like on that. Oh, my God. Well, supposedly they're eliminating it. And, and obviously, well, I don't know when this episode comes out, but by the time it comes out, maybe they've eliminated the gas fees. But they're looking to eliminate gas fees on ETH. Also, also, I got to say, watching uh, people succeed in this way is so cool to me. Um, his, his name is Mike. Same as you, actually, Mike Mike, Winkle, Mike Winkleman, and and we've gone back and forth on DMs a couple a couple of times uh, because we both got into the NFT space at the same time, and then he went. I mean, yo, <laughs> exponential. <laughs> I'm like, hey man, what's it like up there? But I was following him before NFTs were were popular, yep. and I think there's something so powerful in acknowledging persistence. Yep, they're called every days for a reason. Yep, this dude. I mean, talk about. It's every day, bro. Consistency. Has been making this digital art a new piece every single day for 13 years. 13 years before a piece sold for 69 million. Everyone's like, who is this guy? No. He'd been doing this forever. That yep. persistence is so inspiring to me. And just like, he obviously loves what he does. And finally, it's paying off in the biggest way possible. Like, who knows what this is going to become of this piece. Like, is this, is this the modern day Picasso? Like yeah. straight up in a hundred years, they'll be like, yes, people was the guy making digital art with, with, with a subtle commentary about society within almost all of his pieces. Yep. Like, I don't know, man. That's so cool to me. The Mona Lisa, as they say, Honestly, the digital Mona Lisa. And, and you, you can't even touch it. You yep. don't, you don't, it's digital. This world is crazy. Uh, you know, I look at, you know, people are going, why are all these people buying it? You know, like one of my thesis were that, you know, if you're familiar with like the weed game, again, back to weed, no, uh, in, in uh, Colorado, a lot of these people have legitimate businesses, stuff like that, but they can't bank the money, yeah. right? So they buy these expensive bongs. They're like half a million dollars and they don't use them. They just hold them and get them insured as art. And it's a way for them to kind of like, insure their money and Chase, we're talking about money laundering. Why are we beating around the correct? <laughs> so, no, just use the fucking word. Correct. Okay? You're well, a hundred percent right. So what I'm what I what it looks like to me, and I, I what do I fucking know? Yeah, they're cleaning the cash. There it is. That's it. it. They're, they're just moving it for an offset attacks. Right, it's like right. every there's so someone wrote a stat, and I don't know if this is true, but they someone said that there's more people that have $10 million. There's more Bitcoin wallets with $10 million or more in money than there are bank accounts with $10 million more in money. <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. It's wild. I've yeah. been thinking about this a lot lately. There's a lot of people out there who got in really early. Yep. There's a lot of people out there who were pizza delivery guys or people that were, you know, fitness trainers who Still said, yo, I heard about this thing. It's called Bitcoin. I dropped like 30,000 in, in 2013. Oh yeah. What's the 30,000 worth now? 900 million. You know yep. what I'm saying? Like, well, what the fuck trainer. did you just say to me? 900. Yep. Like, dog, this is, this is, uh, the, do you remember the, um, San Francisco boom when Facebook went, pu went public and Google, yep. Google went public and they had a housing shortage because everyone was buying these 40 million. Yep. This is that on a galactic level. Yep. This is going to change finance, wealth, not just on Earth, but in the galaxy, bro. There's oh, going to yeah. be aliens on planet people <laughs> spending fucking millions of, of galactoid coins yep. on fucking some house. Like, oh. this is wild. And what is it going to do to the overall economy? Like, is there enough money here to inflate, deflate, move around how people actually yep. act in the economy as a whole? You know, to be honest with you, I think, you know, Bitcoin has the chance to like kind of save everything, right? You know, if you if you understand dollars and currencies of nations, uh, they're they're inflated because there's not enough of them, right? Because the gold didn't do it, then trust didn't do it, and they just realized that there's not enough financial metrics for everybody to have money. People are always like, they don't teach us how to make money in school. I'm like, yeah, dipshit, that's purposeful, because all they would have to do, you want to solve like poverty. If you have a child, it's illegal to not put $500 in a Vanguard account and lock it up for 50 years. That would stop generational poverty overnight. It really would. 
because that compound interest would change everything. Yeah. There's not enough vessels. So like I always make jokes because people are like the stock market's going to take us. I'm like, no, the derivatives market would do that first. And people are always like, well, a Bitcoin's a fraction of one and that will never work. I'm like, well, a dollar is a fraction of a derivative and a derivative is what actually runs the planet. So I truly think this is a way where more people get a seat at the table. Mm. More people can trade these things back. I think that they're going to start going and convert them into commodities. So there'll be like an orange coin. There'll be a gas and petroleum coin. Mm. There'll be a soy. And what it will do is it will open a new capital market to grow these arenas simultaneously while instead of it being like a swap, two big banks, one taking massive leverage side against the other, it's 200 million people on both sides. Mm. So it's it's spread out and it won't cause ruckus, you know? And the funny thing is it brings me to this point when people are always like, oh, this is a bubble. Like, it's a bubble. This is this is gonna end, it's, it's gonna come crashing down. And my answer to it is, is that even for real? Are bubbles for real? What do you think about that? I think, I think they seen, can be. We've seen it yeah. happen with the markets before, but, but bubbles are bubbles until the bubble pops. But once the bubble pops, it still goes back up historically year a, a, over so there a course you go. of time. So yes, the short-term bubbles exist. And if you're a pussy, they can <laughs> fuck you up because you sell your positions at a lower price. Yep. But if you're not a pussy and you hold on to your coins, diamond fucking then hands, you got bro. diamond hands, then over time, over time. And, and obviously that's, this is not financial yep. advice. I can't say that that's certainly going to happen with the, with the, with the coins, yep. but with the stock market, historically, as Dave Portnoy famously says, stocks only go up. Yep. They only go up. They historically have only gone up. And yep. so I, I, now, once I saw institutions, see, that was the thing for me. Yep. Chase Hero had been telling me for years. Thanks, the bro. Guy, the guy before <laughs> Chase Hero, Jake Paul, had been telling me before him. Before <laughs> Jake Paul, it was some fucking nerdy kid who said, I think Ethereum will change the world's head was massive because his entire body power went, went to his brain. You're yep. talking about what's his name? Fucking yeah. the dude who started Ethereum. I can't <laughs> even think of his name right now. Vitamin. Vit yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Metallic. Yeah. 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 Metallic. And, I, and this is me. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, sure, man. Yeah, sure, man. Yeah, sure, man. Then they're like, Barclays has invested $98 billion into Bitcoin. I'm like, I'm in. Tesla, Tesla. Tesla has it. I'm in. I agree. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, they're fiduciaries. So like, you know, it's their fiduciary duty of their shareholders and their clients to do what's best for them. So they would have to assume that with their research that they're making a sound investment because they have to prove that thesis. Like Wall Street sure. don't play, SEC don't play. They Why'd you do it? You know, what? what, what what's the thesis here, right? So I truly, I'm, I'm with you. I, I think- Listen, the reason I was saying the bubbles is because I think bubbles are made up for retail investors. I think bubbles are caused purposely by institutional money because it's the way to shake people out of their positions. Because like I said, there's never been enough money to go around. And when they see people starting getting too much of it, they're like, oh, we got to shake Shut the whole- Shut it down. Correct. I mean, look what happened with GameStop. And like, let me, this is why I believe we're going to go through some tur turbulent times and then great ones, but there's turbulent along the way. What's GameStop at today? It's high, dude. It's at like three fifty, four hundred. No, it's back no, no, it's, it's back, back up. up. Yeah, yo, it's <laughs> fucked. It's fucked. Yes. If if I just held, it, I'd be rich. Yeah, it's fuck. Well, <laughs> shout out my uh, my fuck. options. Are, uh, Wait, would they have expired anyway? They expired before, worthless. Before. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But but if you yeah but had they, hard shares, you'd have been fine. I, right. Which but, I didn't. But my point is, never in a time in our life has there been the freedom of an average person to be able to buy something they like? That has normally only been set for not wealthy elite, but people who have some bread. Yeah. Like normally if you want to like invest money in like, you know, TD or something like that, like, okay, 25,000, start with 25K. You know, like people are like, I have $800 in my double savings <laughs> yeah. accounts combined. It took me like, six years to 26 years to save it. The thing is, is that we talk about this in a very utopian uh, sense and this idea that- you know, wealth can get spread to the common man. But the oldest story on this planet prior to anything else, except for maybe Adam and Eve, is the haves and the haves nots. Yep. That is just the way the world has worked since the beginning of time. You're either a have or you're a have not. So I like to think that this decentralized currency and finance system could push us through that and 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 rock that system to a yep. point where maybe it's the everybody kind of haves, a lot of kind of haves maybe or whatever it yep. turns into. But the haves 
don't back down very easily. Nope. And and for all of history, the haves have been able to weaponize in a way to push the have nots back in, in on their heels, yep. make them fall back and have to defend themselves and then retreat. It's happened every time, right? And so I'm really curious to see like if the have nots are able to pull it off this time and what the actual fallout looks like as a result of that. Well, I mean, you know, if the GME stuff happened, the fallout would have been, we would have fucked the clearinghouse up. I mean, it. we all laugh because we would have made a few million bucks, but to what avail? To a gallon of gas costing a hundred grand? Mm. To like the ATMs running out of money? Mm. The thing is, is people like everything to be real and open until it gets real and open. And they're like, oh shit, this is really scary. Because the thing is, I don't think any of us truly understand what it takes to run like a fluid economy, right? <laughs> uh, yo, no, <laughs> yo, no, we right? don't. I, my brain explodes when I try to think about it. Right? Like, yourself. <laughs> <laughs> of course. But people like to make believe they do. No, no. People no. like to make they make believe they do. We've seen so many experts come out of the GME and AMC boom, and they're like, Correct. listen, this is what needs to happen for us to fix this problem we have. And trust me, this will work in that. Dog, like, they're, they they want to go and talk shit about Paulson. and they want to go talk shit about all these people that have Warren Buffett and all these people that have fucking devoted their lives. And that's why I was always I always have trouble with the Portnoy Buffett yeah. uh, uh, clash. Yep. Because like as much as I respect Portnoy for his for his uh, tenacity and his ability to take on the the suits. First of all, you're, he's missing a couple zeros for that conversation. Let's be honest, Buffett. You shut your. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna you say it. But, but also, but bar. also, like we've seen Portnoy go through the barstool phase. We've seen him go through the sportsbook phase. We've seen it's him not go a through phase, the Mom. sex, the sex tapes phase. We've seen him go through a lot of phases. Wait, he's got a sex tape? Oh yeah, he's got a few out there. He's out there just doing it. Oh, he's got a few out there. So it, it was always tough for me to see that, like. Warren Buffett devoted his entire existence on this planet to 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 his to the building of wealth for himself and other people. Correct. Well, and so it's just I, what mostly for himself. Is that what you're going to well, say? I, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I was, you know, the thing is, is what I've come to find out is like wealthy people are really good at spreading the narrative the way they see fit. Sure. What happens if the real Warren Buffett just decimated small businesses on his way? And really, the only thing that ever got publicized was like the triumphs. I mean, is that the first time the news ever lied? Right. So, I mean, I look at it like everybody should be out there trying to make their life better. They shouldn't. Dave shouldn't, you know, you know, put himself to uh, Buffett or anybody else sure, because sure. they don't have the same facilities. It's like the only people that you can fairly compete against is yourself, right? Because you have the same everything. I, I, there was a really smart guy who talked about this. I, I'm losing his name right now, but he's talking about like, how can you measure yourself against someone else when you both have completely different makeups, mm -hmm. right? It's like an unfair battle. And you're just choosing to have that one because it feels advantageous for you, if, if that makes sense. I sure. think that's an Albert Einstein. Maybe well, it is because he's a smart Is that the theory of relativity? You just <laughs> No, I think he was talking about how the, are you talking about when the uh, teachers are talking about taking a test and the students are, their strengths are in different things, like trying to tell a fish to climb a tree. It's similar it's to that. Of, it's yeah. like, it'd be like saying like, if, if, if Mike and I were put to a challenge, we, 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 you know, we look like we're sound individuals. We, you know, we're successful. Well, yeah, true. We're both kind of fuck we up. That was wrong. Sound. Logan and <laughs> Je Logan and George, Logan and George. <laughs> right. But if you put them both to the same challenge, you're like compete the same way. Why aren't you doing the same thing? Well, they don't have the same capacity to win against each other. Right. Where did but that quote come from? Uh, it looks like this quote came from Albert Einstein. Nice, nice. Everybody's a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. Great job, George. Great Thanks, You know why so I remember that is because I, I'm very dyslexic. I You're the fish. I, the fi <laughs> I was the fish. A, a, a nice a nice student aide, a girl who doesn't even teach in school. Her name is Mrs. Love. But I'll shout her out. Makes sense. I felt like I was very stupid. I was in a resource class and she was the only one that believed in me. And not even a teacher was like, yo, this kid is having a trouble reading. So she took the test for me. She read it and I, she would just ask me the, like the question. I would answer it verbally. And I tested in the ninth grade ability. And and, I was, and when and you were in high school? Oh, I was like, he was in junior year of college. in high school. <laughs> and I tested the ninth grade. And just, you know, and that's when I got held back. No, but that was, that was a, it changed my life. And then she showed me that picture. And I never forgot it. And I said, you know what? I've just been taking the wrong tests. This crypto conversation is interesting to me. Very interesting. We got a group chat. You're uh, you're big into crypto. You made yep. some money in crypto. There was a point I, when you came on the podcast last time where you were uh, uh, 
putting twenty five thousand dollars into Bitcoin. A coin a day, every still day, yeah. still doing it. A you, coin okay, a day or twenty five thousand. Twenty five thousand. Well, I, if I <laughs> fuck a coin a day, it's so much. Yeah, it's expensive. When I, I think, <laughs> I think. I think you're being a bitch, bro. Oh. You bro, you definitely can afford a coin a day, bro. Facts. But you should fucking- I stick to my routine. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, when yeah. I first started in like, you know, November-ish, whatever, it was like 1.2 Bitcoin when I was buying, you yeah. know? And now it's like 0. 0.3. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, but I'm still doing it because again, I, listen, I made this funny joke that there is a really good chance that I have a better chance of becoming a billionaire from Bitcoin than my own career. That's right. Wild, right? Like that's why. Because didn't, didn't Tesla make more money last year, or, or they made more money on their Bitcoin investment than they did actually selling automobiles? Yeah, last year, in the first two months, <laughs> they made more money in the Bitcoin return than yes. they made on their entire last year selling yes. automobiles. That's Correct. Hilarious. It's crazy. So, what do you do for a living? I'm not sure, bro. I, I swear to God, when Andre Jit came on this podcast and said, "You're you're making more money." He said, "What do you say?" He said, "You're you're basically losing money by not investing in Bitcoin." I was like, "That doesn't make any sense." <laughs> and now I'm I'm invested. We got a group chat. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, we got a group <laughs> chat. Do you have a group chat? Yeah. Uh oh. Uh -oh. It's, called, it's called the Dib Buyers, bro. We buy dips. <laughs> I know you say it every time. I'm still we not buy, invited in this. Buy dips. Do you uh, do you invest in any other coins? Altcoins? Anything? Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, because I couldn't ke keep my head around all the NFTs. Right, because there's just so it's many everywhere. It's like, gonna get worse. Top shots. Yeah. So I bought Dapper Labs. Flow. You bought Flow? I did. We just talked about this. Yeah. I bought Flow. Yeah. I love her. She kills it in the commercial. And here's the thing I like <laughs> about Flow, and like I'm gonna give you my two cents on it. I think it's gonna rocket ship. And here's why. Is this financial advice? Hell no. <laughs> Do I look like a financial person? Like I got a you pussy got a pink pussy poncho. Pink poncho dude. <laughs> um, but what I like about it is it, you have to, it's international. So I'd like to use my international office to purchase it. Right. Oh, I know. Yeah. So what happens when it comes U S U S are gluttonous consumers. We're just, we're that way. Give it to me and give it to me right now. Right. They're consuming these NBA top shots, but most of these people are like, what's a top shot? I agree. I was still kind of like, what's a top shot? Sure. But I understand what a coin is that owns those top shots or push them. There it is. I like the underlying. I think it's safer, right? Like I think that hype can be found around secular items, but it's, it's, it's pushed away when you make it very versatile and they have all these brands. OMI, I think is like another one, bro, bro. Fuck. Am I what good? Are you, what are you saying? You you have the same <laughs> weird little coins that no one's ever heard of yet as me. Yeah, let's you go. Got, you have Omi? Yeah, bro. Shut the fuck up. I, I want a bunch of that because yeah. I like that huh. one. Huh. Pokemon. Y'all definitely, yeah, definitely talked about this. <laughs> no, no I I, on That's my so kids, weird. yo. Because I got in because I got in on Omi. And then I saw some stuff that I liked a little better, so I got out. But I probably, now that you said it, You're, I'll yo, probably get back yo, in. Omi, <laughs> Omi, this is not financial advice. You know, you know what Omi is at right now, right? It's like fractions. It's hundreds Dog, of a it's penny. Point oh oh three. <laughs> this is this. They didn't pay me to do this. They should. I'll reach out to them. But we'll it's, take it's, free it's, coins. It's, it's, it's like a it's like a fraction of a cent of a cent. Yep. That's the coin that should the infrastructure and the model pop in the way that I think it will, uh, yep. because it's based on the VV NFTs yep. who has IP out the fucking ass. Because that's where I think this NFT. I do believe it is a little bit of a bubble right now, yep. but I believe the ones that will power through will be based around IP. Correct. IP. Yep. And the ones they have are crazy. Even Dapper Labs, who you mentioned, yep. it's all IP. Yep. I believe I believe they might have uh, UFC. I believe that's uh, uh, as well. Up next. Yep. Yo, now I'm in. Top shots, I don't, I don't fucking take your highlights, but I will buy the highlight of McGregor knocking and out Jose And so Aldo. will everyone else. Yep. Like the one thing I will say about UFC, and this is... This is why I like it. You you just gave something that was huge. Why I like it is, you know what UFC fans pay? They pay like oh, 70 bucks for you, 299, 997, 799, yeah. 488. Yeah. And they're all just, I gladly play it. You gladly pay it. We all pay it. So what's going to happen when they can buy this other thing? Side note, I don't know how it's possible, but UFC would be a great, great client for Subify because I was watching like the Izzy fight. Yeah. And uh, I was like, damn, I wonder, like, I would really love to see some behind the scenes exclusive content of like what, what it's like, yep. what, it, what is all of it like? Like, I, that's one of those things where they have the super fans. Everyone who buys a UFC fight is like probably 85% of them are super fans. Correct. Watching every fight yep. like me. 
I think they're missing out on, I agree. on, a, on a premium subscription service. I agree. We, believe it or not, we actually started building something for them. We were just going to oh, send it oh, over fantastic. their way. Be like, yo, Dana, shout out. Hit us up. We'll yeah. take good care of you. Yep, now yep, they're yep. just going to hear about it instead here on our show. <laughs> That's also, so, bro, I, I literally can't believe you just said those two uh, those two coins. I, want, I wonder if... <laughs> this is why the, real talk, like it's funny when you say this, but like when I first met you, I hadn't met you guys yet, but when I first met you, you know, like Zach and I don't really mess with a lot of people. We don't like go out of our wheelhouse, probably like yourself. Right. But when I met you, I'm like, God, this guy is like impressive. <sighs> like people, people, you know, because you have to understand like what my expectations going into it were what I saw online, which is really fucked up. Like how, how you used to be portrayed. Sure, right. But sure. maybe some of it, Joss, maybe some of it not. No, I right. Get, I get it. I get but my whole it. point is like, people always like talk to you. He's like, Oh, he's kind of full of himself. He's like, and then I meet you. I'm like, but wait, where's that? Is that the other one? Like, wh who is that? <laughs> right. You know, like, but real talk, like I met you. I'm like, wait, you're really well-spoken. You're you. super polite. More than anything, you're just a polite human. When I first met you, you treated me like I was like your homie out the jump. And I, you know, you've always feel a lot of places, new places, yeah. right? But you're really brilliant, fact, thank, thank factually. You. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you, that. You keep your, you know, you keep your ear to the grindstone. So, I, I'm, I, I think I'm the one should be impressed. But like, it's just notable that you'd be in those uh, two. You know I, what I'm I, saying? No, I got, I got good people around me. I learn from my mistakes. Like, it's, a, it's a whole thing. It's a thing, dude. Right? You know. And um, look at I like that. people got, you know, and it's, you know, kind of not to go back to like the club thing, but like this podcast was like your first time giving someone really long form no. content into you, seeing who you are more than the six minute little cycle, all of you guys. And you can really build a relationship like, oh, I fuck with that person. They're like, damn, you know? So it, I, it's fun. It's fun to be talked about that. It was so fun because I got like paragraphs of DMs on my first podcast, like in it. And I turned to them, I was like, oh, they they never really knew yeah, they don't who know we you. were. They actually yeah. do not know you. Yeah, it's and it's, crazy. it's weird because we think they do. But they didn't. Well, that's because the world controls your narrative. Yep. The, the tabloids, the news, all those control the narrative. And and that's fine. That's how the world goes. But you should also at least have somewhere where you get to control it too somewhat, right? Yep. Yep. And that's the podcast format. Yeah, it's phenomenal. You've got a place where you can control uh, the narrative a little bit, and that's the Watchers Group. Yep. I got to hang out in it for the first time. Yeah, yeah. The other day, it was amazing. Hell it's yeah. It's not only a way to uh, get people to approach businesses one way, but also the way they think about life, the way they act. And obviously, there was a guy in the group that shared a really uh, touching story with Chad, me when yeah. I was in the group, which was awesome to see. How long have you been doing that for? How could people find it? Like, Talk to us about that for a hot sec. Um, well, first off, hit me up on Instagram. We keep it pretty private. You know, we're always, just, you know, we don't make the family right. The reason it was so cool with you is like, we vet everybody. You know, I don't, I don't want you to be a Wharton school of business. I just want you to be someone who like realizes you're not where you're at and you need help to get there. Right. Because just like you said, for us, we believe 90% of this is fixing the broken in between the business and then the business will come. It's why we have like Vinny Shorman, you know, shout out. We, the same guy who used to hypnotize Joe Rogan and do all his mind stuff. Oh. We hired him in-house for our clients to help them constantly work on wow. their stuff, right? Because like, how do you take on a really big challenge when you're broken? Is it possible? Well, the first challenge you have to take in on is fixing yourself. Correct. Before anything else. So we like to do that. You know, a lot of these places are like, go make $10 million tomorrow, start this. And, and like, my reality is like, maybe that's a possibility, an exception to the rule, but I like to live by the rule. So we just create a same thing, a safe environment for people to ask real questions from real people making money, not some kid on clubhouse who's like, how to make $10 million. He's made eight <laughs> a lot of those. <laughs> a lot of those. Clubhouse <laughs> crazy. Clubhouse Bro, crazy. I was just in an NFT chat today this morning and I had to like leave because I was like y'all don't know nothing about this like at all <laughs> and it, that was what I was I'm like wow there are a lot of people are gonna go broke a lot of people yeah. are gonna get screwed here that's why I, that's why I don't, the fuck blind with, I don't the fuck, blind. yeah I don't fuck with that app very much I think there's a, I think there's a lot of self-proclaimed experts on that app the one reason I do like it is I'll scroll past the nft chats I'll scroll past the how to be a creator chat and I'll go to the um how to shoot your sh or like shoot your shot yeah. with like with like you know Brooklyn girls only and I'll yep. go in there I'll be like yo what's up ma like what's popping and they're like boy what? like I like going to those groups yep. Clubhouse has got a lot of groups to shoot your shot try to pick up like yeah. a you we, know we a went, milf we went like to one yesterday shit. it's a, it's it, the title of the room was 
don't bother me if if you're not over six foot and I can't climb you like a tree. Yeah, I actually that was the title it of the I, group. I, I thought I, no, it. because I thought it was like don't enter if or this is a room for people who can climb trees over six foot. And we both were like, oh, we can. We, we, I, I, I love climbing trees. Of course, we can do that. I love. I, I love tried to get trees. into the group chat, but I didn't even let me in. It was really weird. <laughs> Talking about Clubhouse, which <laughs> you probably also can't get on. Oh, no, I was invited a few times. Oh. I, 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 I hate it. I don't oh. like. This is what I don't like. I don't like the LA like do 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 do. You have to be invited into the shit. And I was like, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. The thing is, what I do like about Clubhouse is I think that it's like the first place. People get to really see how full of shit people are. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I don't, I don't, fuck, I just don't. But I, fuck but with I think that might be the opening for the show. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think it's actually a good thing because I think for a long time, again, you don't really get to see a lot of content. You get to see someone's Instagram 60 second reel or a swipe up story. Like on Clubhouse, it's kind of like acapella. It's like if you suck at singing without auto tune, <laughs> we gonna you, find out. Yeah. Yeah. We gonna and, find you. And, and so someone gets called up, they're like, well, um, y well, you know, I believe that if um an N was with an F and a T, <laughs> we could put an apostrophe S and there'd be plural. You know? <laughs> You're like, wait, what did you just say? Like, it's that basic. But again, I think that what the greatest thing it's doing, and I think it's the greatest thing people need to know is you don't have to be something so amazing to get somewhere in life. Most people are just cat shit. And, or dog shit and you got to be cat piss mm. like just one level above it and I think when people see all these other people that they hold this insane high accord talk acapella like wait you're nothing you're just a person mm. and it's like yeah on the contrary I have been impressed, highly mm -hmm. impressed with some select oh, individuals. Yeah, for like, sure. Oh, yeah, sure. sure. Most sure. of the people who I've had the pleasure of uh, coming across on, on Clubhouse are like, I'm you, like, oh. Well, because you vet your group. I, I was going to say you are yeah. Logan Paul. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure you're, you're going in the right one. Uh, I was going <laughs> to say, what well, rooms are you going? You're going to the tree well, climbing no, group? Just say, yeah, it's just that the groups exist. And even, and even in some <laughs> of the top, and even in some of the top groups, you know, the group might be about uh, influencer marketing because I'll jump into some of those. Sometimes. Yep. Just to, honestly, I'll sit there and I won't say anything. And you know? yep. like, I always wonder, I'm like, do these people go through and see like, oh, that's Mike from Impulsive just sitting, listening to yep. some woman from a small cap company in Maryland, yep. like selling influencer marketing tips. And I'll go in and listen. And there's, there are a lot of, smart people, but sometimes what it is, is the moderator, the key, the core moderators for the group yep. are the people with the intelligence. And then sometimes you'll just get some like boneheads that jump. Oh in yeah, and talk absolutely. So well, you know? It's a whole, you know, listen, I'm a big fan of anything that connects us. I think that the world's super divided and fragmented and anything that will connect us and take people's mind away from all the chaos is like a yeah. good thing, right? You know, like the, the lulling chaos of the world, slowly dulling with things like clubhouse, things like and I wonder if Twitter Space is going to make a run at him or if it's just too late. Subify. So let's go. Let's go. We didn't even get to get into any of the, like, one time, next time we have you on, we should get into some of the juicy stuff. Because you got a lot of stances too, Chase. Oh, yeah. And I, mean, we, I don't even want to fucking, we're, I'm not in the <laughs> mental space to go there. <laughs> table. Mia, let's just say this. The last time I was sitting on a very large private jet flying over the mountains <laughs> of Colorado, me and you got in a fucking malfunctioning fight for about an hour and a half yeah, over yeah, some crazy about, about what? Nothing. We please politics. Correct. We're not going to do this, but I'm just saying. Maybe next time this we have been Chase a great on. Episode. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> but wait, one, one more thing before we sign off here, because it, it has been a great episode. Chase, you're very inspirational. I, I'm. I'm sure you know this. Yo, I appreciate it's that. probably what, what part of the watchers group is, right? Yep. Uh, just getting people to believe in themselves. I, I think I believe in myself a little more than I did before this podcast started. Yep. Dylan made this. You don't have to do five, but Chase Heroes, five keys to being a hero. You don't got to do five. I like how you use that picture too. It's like, it's probably the only professional looking picker I have, headshot and all. It's ridiculous. Bro, it's the first time I've ever seen you without a hat. I was going to say, I think that's why my wife married me and then I put my hat on right after and she goes, wait, what did I sign up for? <laughs> so look, do you have, uh, do you have maybe like three like inspirational? Oh, I got, um, I got some good ones. Okay, cool. Here we go. Oh yeah. Number one. <laughs> If you're bad at life and bad at understanding people, go to college. Social acknowledgement and social understanding of situations is vital in mm. life. Mm. Number two, control your emotions. Every time you act out of emotions, it leaves a negative impact to your life that is almost impossible to come out when that logic is ahead. Number three, 
get out of the town that you were born in. <laughs> that is so crucial in life. Seriously, if you, those aren't necessarily your people, you were born there. Go find your people. Next one, have people and only people around you that inspire you to be better. Get rid of every single person in your life. And I mean every single person in your life that doesn't make your flame shoot like Elon Musk's fl flamethrower. <laughs> Last one, the most important, be yourself. Someone in this world will love you for who you are and you will find your lane if you try hard enough. And remember, we're all vessels of God. He's got our back no matter if you believe it or not. Let's go. Chase Hero, ladies and gentlemen. Follow him on Instagram, yeah. at Chase Hero. Chase, 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 We love you. That was actually really, really fun. Thank you for listening to this episode of Impulsive. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Take it easy. Peace.